Thanks so much to Liquid IV for partnering with me for this video. You can use the discount code Kayla says for 15% off plus free shipping on their wonderful products. Visit the link in my bio for more information. I am starting to feel kind of bad for Evan Peters. While various men in Hollywood have stepped into the internet's white boy of the month role over the years, Evan Peters comes right back in to fill the void whenever he is cast in a new project. And from his breakout role in American Horror Story until now, people have never stopped being weird about him. He is just one of those guys that nobody knows how to quite talk normally about. I would assume that this probably does a number on one's psyche, merely having to exist while a rabid fanbase of young girls, many of them likely underage, constantly indulge in fantasies that involve you ripping their throat out and eating it or whatever. I feel for the guy. And while I only have a very limited amount of pity for the rich and famous, I would go as far as to say that this man is currently trapped in a hell of his own making. Well, not really, he's actually in a hell of Ryan Murphy's making, but we'll get there. Today we're going to talk about the dehumanization of Evan Peters, why he's stuck in this negative feedback loop, and what I think it says about internet stan culture as a whole. But before we talk about how thirsty we all are for Evan over here, I wanted to once again briefly mention that I am partnering with Liquid IV to help quench your thirst in real life. See what I did there? If you struggle with dehydration and just not getting enough water intake during the day, Liquid IV is a really beneficial product to try out. I personally enjoy their passion fruit hydration multiplier, which gives me an extra boost when I start my day. Once again, you can head down to my bio to use my discount code for 15% off plus free shipping, and thanks again to Liquid IV for supporting my channel and keeping me hydrated. Let's go back to where this all started. American Horror Story is an anthology horror television series created by Brad Falchuk and our old pal Ryan Murphy. AHS is more of a complex entity now than it was back in 2011, but season one of the show was definitely ahead of its time. While the cast did have some well-known names, Tessa Firminga, Connie Britton, and Jessica Lange to name a few, Evan Peters, who until that point had some small roles in Hollywood here and there, several of them comedic in nature, was really the breakout star with his portrayal of Tate Langdon. Tate and Violet probably ruined a whole generation of people. A lot of Murder House actually holds up, and in my opinion, it's the most consistent season of AHS out of the ones that I've watched, and for the record, I watched through Freak Show and then I stopped caring. However, Tate's whole character is the epitome of edgy and over the top, and probably would have some very different discourse surrounding him had this aired even like five years later. For those who don't know, Tate Langdon is a ghost that haunts the Murder House in American Horror Story Season 1. And he doesn't operate the way that you think a normal ghost would. Other characters see and interact with him, and he's able to cause chaos despite, you know, the whole being dead thing. Spoilers here, but we eventually learn that Tate, who has been pursuing Violet, the daughter of the family that now lives in the murder house, was actually a mass shooter who was killed by the SWAT team in his room, which is why he now haunts the space. Nothing about Tate is subtle leading up to this either, whether it's a scene of him instructing Violet on how to seaward herself so that it's harder to stitch, or the classic normal people scare me shirt. And perhaps the most infamous iconography in all of American Horror Story, Tate essays Violet's mom and forcibly impregnates her while he's wearing a gimp suit. Now again, had this aired in 2021 and not 2011, I think the reaction toward Tate would be very different because, well, in comparison, even Billy from Stranger Things is too much for some people nowadays. However, 10 years ago, people, mainly young girls, completely ate this shit up. I am of the general opinion that art certainly has its place in the world, and that taking the character to this much of an extreme is fine. In fact, it may have been an intentional choice for us to be bait and switched by Tate's undeniable offbeat charm the way Violet was, only to find out that he was more of a monster than he is a man. However, I don't think anyone could have predicted the reaction to Tate and Violet's love story, which, like, was not very introspective at all. Hell, if you look at fan edits that were posted as recently as this year, the comments summarize their entire relationship as a toxic love that places romance above all else. And I'm not saying that you can't appreciate Tate as a character and that you must rebuke his existence in every comment section you see fit. However, this is the starting point, in my opinion, for the divorcing of Evan Peters from his humanity. 
I think that the portrayal of this character was so over the top and visceral and it really struck a nerve to the point that many people quite literally started viewing Evan and Tate as one and the same. This was also the beginning of a powerful dynamic between Evan and showrunner Ryan Murphy, as Evan would go on to play various roles in future seasons of AHS as it changed themes and seasons, but everyone always came back to his portrayal of Tate. And as AHS lost steam the longer it went on, I think the showrunners ultimately knew this, going as far as to give the character his own redemption moment in a crossover season. I didn't actually watch any of the newer AHS series, but from what I understand, they sort of retconned some of the murder house lore to explain that Tate's actions were actually caused by the house, because it was built over a portal to hell. So Tate was like actually a vessel for this separate entity's agenda, which means that Violet can now forgive him and they can have their own happily ever after in the afterlife. This retcon robs Tate of any of his agency, almost as a message to fans that says, we know you never let go of this character and now you can feel less bad about liking him. I don't keep up with AHS, so I don't know how this was received by avid watchers. However, in a world where young men are more and more likely to end up being a real life Tate Langdon, I don't know if it was the wisest choice to appeal to all of the young girls who want to be with Tate Langdon. Evan Peters has never explicitly said how he feels about the phenomenon of Tate and the culture that he created. However, what he has said is that he wants to do something else. And by something else, I mean roles that are less dark and depressing, a feat that was briefly achieved with his appearance as Marvel's Quicksilver until he was killed off. But throughout all of this, he has kept a close relationship with Ryan Murphy, who has several muses that he works with across different projects, Evan being one of them. And in a recent press tour for Dahmer, which we'll get into in a moment, Murphy acknowledged that Evan has been all but begging to do a comedy. In an interview back in 2018, Peters said that Murphy had promised that his next role in American Horror Story would be a comedy. And by 2018, he was quoted saying that he needed to take a break from AHS altogether due to his mental health. I'm going to take a break, regroup, decompress, get back in touch with what I feel like I want to do, he said. Not that I didn't want to do any of those roles, they're exactly what I wanted to do, it was just 0 to 100 instantaneously. I'm goofy, I'm silly, I like to have fun, I don't like to yell and scream, I actually hate it. I think it's disgusting and really awful, and it's been a challenge for me. Horror Story sort of demanded that of me. It's been all a massive stretch for me and really difficult to do. It's hurting my soul and Evan as a person. Let me out! Let me out! This is not a dance! I'm begging for help! I'm screaming for help! Please come let me out! So of course Ryan doesn't necessarily owe Evan Peters anything. He's a creative and I'm sure there are thousands of other actors who would kill to be in this position. However, it's clear that Ryan and his team can do comedy, with Glee and Scream Queens being examples. So to not even throw Evan a bone after all these years is a little suspicious, especially when you consider that the preference toward dark roles didn't end with AHS. All right, before we talk about Dahmer, I need you to know a few things. One, I did not watch it, and I am not going to watch it. I do not feel comfortable with its existence, and I'm going to tell you why. If you want to pass on the ethics of true crime rant, skip ahead in the video, the timestamps are below. Here's where I stand on true crime media as a whole. I do not think it's inherently unethical as a genre but the internet hates nuance, so that's already a point against me. The best and most ethical form of true crime is journalism. Like, I know it's not super sexy to say that you're super into investigative journalism these days. However, things like Dateline, Serial, 48 Hours, even local news, all of that is well and good to me. For those of you who don't know, there are rigorous standards that go into producing journalistic content with regards to true crime and cold cases. All of it is well researched, documented, and the families of these victims are often involved in the process and ultimately consenting to the media being produced, mainly because many of these cases have gone unsolved and they would like to bring awareness to the situation. Hell, I would even argue that there are YouTube true crime series that fall under this category of journalism even though they're presented a little differently. For example, I think Kendall Ray does a great job. Her work is very respectful and she makes an effort to platform a lot of the families of these victims with their consent and she actually relies on the journalism associated with these cases for her scripts and acknowledges that. It's about as ethical as you can get. Here's where we run into issues. Mukbangs and makeup tutorials where people tell the stories of gruesome murders and pronounce all the names wrong. Corny millennial podcasts called My Favorite Murder Surprise Party or whatever. And my least favorite, true crime reenactments. 
There are no reasons for true crime reenactments to exist. In a world where there is plenty of horror-adjacent creative work loosely based on real murders, for example, every fictional clown like Twisty from AHS or Art from Terrifier is in some form or fashion based on a real-life serial killer, John Wayne Gacy. But while these characters certainly draw inspiration from a real-life story, the victims are not actively being disrespected on screen because they're not real. But when you're fictionalizing an entire real-life murder that took place, that's where it gets into yikes territory because you're often insulting the living by proxy. For example, The Thing About Pam, a Hulu miniseries based on the murders of Pam Hupp and starring Renee Zellweger, was notoriously panned by critics due to its comedic tone. And the family of the victim involved here actively has been speaking out against its existence because it's really weird to see Renee Zellweger camp up a fictionalized portrayal of the woman who murdered your mom in cold blood. I feel the exact same way about Dahmer, especially because Ryan Murphy confirmed that they reached out to work with the victim's families as is standard practice, and none of them responded. He said, It's something that we researched for a long time, and we, over the course of the three, three and a half years when we really started writing it, working on it, we reached out to 20, around 20 of the victim's families and friends trying to get input, trying to talk to people, and not a single person responded to us in that process. So at that point, maybe you should just, you know, not make the product then. And it's Netflix, and they're trying to cling on to whatever relevancy they still have left in the streaming wars, so they quite literally do not care as long as it makes them money, which it has, but I personally just don't want to be complicit in it, and if you think that's a pretentious take, just wait until 10 years down the line when somebody decides to do a miniseries based on Elliot Roger or Nicholas Cruz, because it will happen, and you will feel very uncomfortable watching it. So okay, Ryan Murphy gets this deal for Dahmer, and claims that he auditioned 100 people for the role before ultimately settling on our golden boy, Evan Peters. This is not a bad choice, and judging by his performance in other similar projects, I'm sure he was more than adequate in the role. However, whenever a male actor takes on a character like this, there are usually conversations to be had about method acting. This usually happens whenever somebody plays a Batman villain for some reason. And Evan did some method acting to get into character for this part. Murphy claims that he actually spent months doing things like putting weights in his arms to help imitate Dahmer's walk and posture, and watching footage of the serial killer to help him get into a dark place. Will it get him an Emmy nomination? Sure. Was it good for his psyche? Probably not. But now we get back to the question of Evan's agency in this situation. He easily could have said no to playing Dahmer, but for all of the backlash surrounding this series, no one is really blaming him. They're just sexualizing him. And it's fine to find him attractive in the role, you like what you like, that's always been my philosophy, especially when it comes to the fallacy of applying real life morals to a fictional character, but with this whole Dahmer situation, I think the phenomenon is worth interrogating when the spotlight is on a real person who did real, awful things. And it reminds me of how people still feel about Tate Langdon as a character. There's something about Evan's persona in these roles that just drives people straight to sexualization, overlooking the bad or more complex parts of the characters themselves, but also like, what is this doing to Evan as a person? I feel as though at this point that Evan is trapped in a negative feedback loop that Ryan Murphy is enabling, and I don't think it's the most healthy. And I know I'll get the inevitable, it's just acting, it's not that deep comments, but I don't know, man. There has to be some psychological way to seeing fan edits of yourself as Jeffrey fucking Dahmer. So ultimately, I hope Evan Peters gets to do his dream comedy one day. I hope Ryan Murphy gives this man a break. He deserves it. Go consume some ethical true crime, or don't, whatever, consume this garbage instead, I guess. Speaking of consuming garbage, follow me on Twitter. Okay, bye! Oh